can non-faceless vehicles have physical or mental disabilities, physical handicaps are possible if we're improperly built or have faulty components. Such occurrences can affect our performance or cripple us entirely. Regarding mental disabilities, no. And since I know someone is going to say something, I'm not mentally disabled, I'm just stupid. They're not the same thing. Indeed. What determines an engine's accent? Nothing really, it's completely random. Neil Clive and Matthew were all built in Scotland, but their accents are English. I was built on Sodor, but for some reason mine is Welsh, and there are some that just sound like bad stereotypes. Get I mate! See what I mean? Or should it be, hear what I mean? Are non-faceless vehicle voices louder compared to humans? No! They're about the same. We can! Adjust our volume when appropriate! Can non-faceless vehicles have allergic reactions? If we're given the wrong kind of fuel or if it's contaminated, it can cause severe problems. We consider this a type of allergy, but we're not allergic to things like peanuts and pollen. But I'm allergic to work! No, you're just a lazy sod. Can you get drunk? Of course not, that would be very unladylike. But in all seriousness, no. Alcohol could be pumped into our system, but all that would do is damage us. We would not become intoxicated. See the little goblin, see his little feet. And his little nosy woes, isn't the goblin sweet? Yes! Oh, men. How many coaches can each of you pull before your wheel starts slipping? If we're talking express coaches and fully loaded, for me, it's five. Uh, eleven. Eight. Twelve. Wait, this is why you cancelled our podcast? So you can replace it with something that was already on it? Yep. Let's answer another question. How many guns does it take to haul your asses off to prison? I'm sure someone will count. Do you celebrate your birthdays? If so, how do you treat yourselves? Yes, we do. Most of the time it's a simple happy birthday from everyone else. On special occasions, say if an engine is really old, they'll throw a party. We treat ourselves by doing less work, enjoying a peaceful roll along the line, or some other activity. For me, I take a large cucumber and... with some whipped cream and an extension cord. Are non-faceless vehicles afraid of certain types of accidents? Yes, all of them. Anytime we have an accident, the consequences can be serious, even fatal. So we go to great lengths to keep ourselves, our crews, and our passengers safe. Whee! Well, most of us. Have any of you ever wanted to travel around the world? Some, and those who have mostly don't want to do it again. I'd love to go to Germany, just so I can mention the war. Can vehicles run for positions of power? Technically, yes. Like marriage between non-faceless vehicles, there's nothing that says we can't run for office. But no vehicle has ever tried because, well, it's obvious, we'd be terrible at the job, and I doubt anyone would vote for us anyway. Hey Falcon, guess what? I've been elected Prime Minister! God, I hate democracy sometimes. How do you clean out your smoke boxes? We're able to blow any built-up ash out through our funnels, which is a good thing too, as our faces completely cover our smoke box doors and cannot be opened. That's where you're wrong. What do you mean? I mean... Boo! Ah! Don't ever do that again! No promises, rotten swine. Can non-faceless vehicles gain or lose weight? Technically, yes. We gain weight every time we take on fuel and lose it when we burn it. The same applies when we undergo repairs and overhauls. Parts are removed or added, which are sometimes heavier or lighter than the old ones. If you mean can we become obese or anorexic, then no, simply because we don't have any body fat. Hi, Hi Stanley. Stanley. Ignore that. Are there two Henrys? For those who don't know, the two Henrys theory suggests after I had my accident with the flying kipper and was sent to crew, the workmen didn't actually repair me. Instead, they took parts from me and built another engine. One that just happened to look and sound like me and had all my memories from before my accident. Yeah, sorry to break it to those who believe this theory, but it's a myth. There aren't two Henrys. There's just me and my twin brother Horace. Hi Henry. Hi Horace. How does non-faceless rolling stock take green and black water? Shaken and stirred. But in all seriousness, any time a non-faceless coach or truck is created, they're fitted with something called an injector box. It's mounted to our undercarriage with pipes leading to all our wheels. Any time we need to take on green or black water, it's pumped into the box and has the desired effect. What were to happen if other liquids were poured in? Check out Scruffy. He's been tripping on LSD for the last three weeks. Can non-faceless vehicles breathe underwater? 
Technically, no. We don't breathe at all since we don't have lungs. So what would happen if a non-faceless vehicle landed in a body of water? That depends on the level of submersion. If it's minor, they can likely be repaired. If it's major, well, the odds of survival aren't good since most mechanical parts are not designed to be underwater. Even chaps like me and Tencent who live on the water, if we sink, we're basically goners. Where is Tencent anyway? <laughs> Oh, right. How often do you have to go in for maintenance? Every year we undergo routine maintenance, every five years we get minor overhauls, and every ten years we have a complete overhaul. This is essential, otherwise we just fall apart. <laughs> Lousy millennial workforce, can a faceless engine become non-faceless after a major rebuild? No, I tried doing just that and it didn't go well. Kill me later. Are you able to extend your wheels out and break the rails? No, there is a railway series story where one of us does just that, but such a thing isn't possible because our wheels have a fixed width. However, an engine can still break the rails if they're too big for them. Hello, Rusty. Hey, Murdoch. How do engines with smoke deflectors see side to side? We don't. I often have to rely on sound to know who I'm talking to. Hi, Reginald. Hello, Stanley. If someone put food in your mouth, would you be able to swallow it? No, our mouths are like pockets. They're holes that don't go anywhere. If someone were to put anything in our mouths, we'd just spit it out. And believe me, people have tried to shove all sorts of things in our gobs and paid the price. So remember everyone, not every hole is a goal. Can you feel your tenders after they've been removed? No, the moment it's detached from us, we feel nothing. But the moment it's reattached, all feeling returns. It's a most unusual sensation, especially when they give you the wrong tender. Oh, bother. Can non-faceless vehicles be deaf or blind? What? Who said that? Don't mind these two, they're just taking the piss. No, engines can't be deaf, but they can have poor eyesight. Why that is, I have no idea. Probably staring too long at a computer screen. But I've been blind as a bat since before computers were a thing. Well, sucks to be you. Can engines be faster, smarter, or stronger? We can become faster and stronger through upgrades, but it's not like with humans where you can improve yourselves through exercise. As for getting smarter, I don't know what that word means, so I don't know. Can non-faceless vehicles have pets? Kind of. Sometimes animals gravitate towards us and tend to stick around, so they become a sort of unofficial pet. That was the case for me and my quote-unquote pet duck, Dilly. It was also the case for Toby and his dog, Henry and his cow, and Thomas and his pussy. Can non-faceless vehicles suffer from motion sickness? No, it'd be pretty unfortunate if we did. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to get turned around. Whoa! Okay, that was a little... fast. Ugh. Um, like, share, and subscribe, and... Ugh! Sorry. How small or large can a non-faceless vehicle be? While it's possible for large vehicles to come to life, I don't think it's possible for anything below minimum gauge to become non-faceless. That's where you're wrong, fool! That was uncalled for. Can non-faceless vehicles survive on different planets? I don't know. The only vehicle that's ever gone into space is a rocket ship. And no, none of them were non-faceless. As for the rest of us, I very much doubt- Good news, duck! You're being sent to the moon! Beg the fucking Pardon, sir? Huh, what do you know? We can survive on other planets. Well, most of us. Can non-faceless vehicles bleed, get concussions, or black eyes? Let's find out. Okay, oh, Yeah? Get her, boys! <laughs> nope, we can't. Like, share, and subscribe, and <laughs> How much sleep does a non-faceless vehicle need? On average, the same amount as a human. Depending on our workload, we may need more or less. If we don't get enough, the results can be... nasty. <laughs> he hasn't slept in five months. What exactly is boiler ache? It's when the pipes in our boilers become blocked. Pressure then builds up behind said blockages, which causes intense pain. And if they're not cleared quickly... <laughs> Bad things happen. Can a non-faceless vehicle be rebuilt into another vehicle? I don't know, it's never been done before. Peep, peep, peep! I'm a really useful weapon! Well, there you go. Like, share, and subscribe, and... Thomas! Sorry! Can non-faceless vehicles grow hair? 
No, you might have seen pictures of engines with mustaches, stubble and the like, but that's pure fiction. We can't grow hair anywhere. Hey Jimmy, have you seen my razor? Nope, sorry. Can non-faces speak or swap faces? No, and before you ask, it's never been done before. That's where you're wrong. Crikey, it's like looking into a mirror. Only not. You're right, it's not. Can non-faces vehicles drive themselves? Yes, we can, but since we can't repair or refuel ourselves, we always prefer to have a crew member with us in case something goes wrong. Surprisingly, it's not a legal requirement that we have one. If we're only traveling a short distance, sometimes we'll go crewless, and sometimes certain fools will push their luck by going further. Shut up, Dookie. Pillock, what would have happened if you gave green or black water to a faceless vehicle? I don't know. Let's find out. How about that? Can non-faceless vehicles get sick? Mechanical issues are a type of sickness, and if we take on bad fuel, that can cause problems. If you mean from colds, flus and the like, no, it is literally impossible for us to contract biological diseases. Then how come I've got smallpox? Comedic effect. Can non-faceless vehicles be converted to run on different fuel sources? Yes, we can. Many coal-burning steamies have been rebuilt to run on oil, and sometimes electric-powered diesels have been overhauled to run on petrol. Now they're experimenting with rechargeable batteries. <laughs> All right, six and a half feet. Getting better. What are your faces made of? Paint for the books, resin for the models, and pixels for the CGI characters. Eric, I don't think that's what they meant. Oh, right, sorry. Man, I'm so dumb. Our faces are made from a material called ABS, or acrylonitrile butadine styrene. Wait, what? Yeah, I never heard of that stuff before today either. How does family work for non-faceless vehicles? Well, we don't have parents, and no, we don't count the people who build us. Vehicles within the same class are regarded as siblings, and that's pretty much it. An argument could be made similar vehicles are cousins, but we don't really go beyond immediate relations. <laughs> Hey, what are you doing, Step Bro? Stop doing that, you sicko! How much do non faceless vehicles know after the first firing? We know our names, how to speak, how to read, and basic mathematics. Don't ask me how, I don't know. After our first firing, we're taught how to move and the specifics of our jobs. And any vehicle worth their fuel never stops learning. <laughs> oh, sorry! And some never do. How would drinks like coffee or soda affect a non-faceless vehicle? Well, liquids like that aren't meant to be used as fuel. If they somehow entered our system, we would likely break down. This would also apply to energy drinks. But it does give you wings! And I wish it hadn't. What's the life expectancy for a non-faceless vehicle? Assuming we're well maintained and our workload isn't too strenuous, we can live for decades, even centuries. Reneus and I, for instance, are over 150 years old, and with any luck, we'll be here for another 150. <laughs> Bother. What happens if an engine is given a name before its first firing? That can be an awkward situation. An engine's name is often chosen to commemorate a person, place, or event, so changing it could be seen as disrespectful. Any engine that has an opposing name is basically stuck with it, but on rare occasion, the names can be similar or identical. Hello, Scott. Hello, Dick. How often do American engines come to Sodor? Not very. After all, there's an entire ocean between us and the States. It's not like they can just pop in for a cup of tea. How do you like yours, Gordon? The same way I like my women. Why? No, smoking hot. Twit. If a non facious engine dies, will it still work? We're about to find out. Ready? Ready, go! <coughs> Fascinating. Can Emily send me feet pics? Sorry lads, if you want those, you'll have to buy them like everyone else. Wait, what? You actually do that? Yes, didn't you know? No, I didn't even think this was a real question. Well, it was submitted by someone called Kill Bill 69 You freak. I shove your kink shaming up your bunker. Ah, boys will be boys. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Well, the average woodchuck burrow measures about 7.6 to 9.1 meters in length. If you take the volume of dirt it would have to remove and apply that figure to wood, the answer would be about 320 kilograms. As some bonus facts, woodchuck is just another word for groundhog, and a beaver's anus tastes like strawberry. Don't 
Don't ask me how I know that one. What is the shortest skyscraper in the world? The Newbie McMahon Building in the United States. It was constructed in 1919 in the town of Wichita Falls when the area was undergoing tremendous growth thanks to the discovery of a nearby oil reservoir. The contractor was a Mr. J.D. McMahon who wanted to build a high-rise office block to house new businesses. He raised over $3 million in today's money from investors to build his skyscraper, which turned out to be a scam. For those who don't know, under the imperial measurements, feet are represented by an apostrophe and inches are denoted by quotation marks. On the blueprints McMahon showed his investors, the height of the building was written as 480 inches, not feet. Seemingly, nobody noticed this until after the block was built. The investors sued McMahon, but the judge ruled in his favor since, legally speaking, he had built the skyscraper to the agreed-upon specifications. Just goes to show how important it is to be diligent and to suspect everyone, no matter how charming they are. Morning, Reggie. Fuck off, slut. Like, share, and subscribe, and drop a question in the comments. I want a divorce. Bugger. What's the nicest view on Sodor? That would have to be the top of Gordon's Hill. You can see for miles in every direction. Though I'm currently looking at something equally stunning. Ah, thanks, Jimmy. No, I was talking about them. <laughs> I deserve that. What is the longest word in the English language? New mono ultramicroscopic silicovolcaniconiosis. Clocking in at 45 letters in length, it refers to a type of lung disease. And you better like, share, and subscribe because it took me six weeks to learn how to say it.